Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to another episode of On the Bench with Sport Fishing on the Fly. Today, a little uh, midge pattern, um, one that I've been playing with for oh, quite a few years now. Um, it's a buzzer, yeah, um, um, English buzzer style, but it's it's a little different. Um, you'll see when once we get going into it. But uh, this is it's been a very successful fly for me season around. Not it's not an early season, late season, mid season. I've done well with this one all year um i haven't done phenomenal with it like it's not one of those flies so far that that i've done like one after another after another fish but it's i've really done well on it especially when i find that they're being a little picky for some reason i think it's the extra little bit of uh of uh, white in it that may make this pop so but uh we'll see uh here we go so in the vice today we have a Hens BL550 clink hammer hook. Uh, I use the 550 and the 554. Use whatever chronomid hook you really like. Um, for thread, going to be using Semperfly Nano Silk in black. For um, the uh, uh, body itself, I'm going to be using some. This is uh, the 20% um, 075 uh, window tint pre cut. Uh, and then for the rib, I'm going to be using some Semperfly mirror tinsel in red. And for the uh, gills, I'm just going to be using some Semperfly white poly yarn. And that's it. Now, it, there is a twist to it. It's not just like, like that, but uh, you'll see once we get going here. So I'm just starting my thread like I always do. And then just going to come back. Trying to keep my thread flat, so you'll see me turn the vise and flatten the, the thread often throughout this video. Um, I like keeping this very thin, this profile. So I just go down, and then in open wraps, I'm just going to come up, and I want to leave a good space for the thorax section up front. So now I'm going to take a piece of the, of the red mirror tinsel just catch that in it doesn't really matter if i go in over top there into the thorax section because it's all going to get covered anyway I'm just going to come all the way back right around that bend i want to be down around that bend okay and then i'm gonna turn my vise again and just give that a counterclockwise spin to flatten that thread out and then I'm going to take my red and just keep it out of my way. And then I'm going to come back up again to about there. I'm going to take my piece of window tint. I'm just going to catch it in by the tip. I just cut it at a little bit of an angle. Just to get it to be able to catch in just a little easier and really not a huge deal but just get that started i don't keep pulling it away there we go and then try to keep that flat on the body again not worried too too much about closed turns all the way down around that corner okay now i'm going to flatten my thread again and now i'm going to try to get a nice even coat even though this tint will cover all any imperfections. I'm going to stop about there. Take your window tint. I'm just going to give it a bit of a tug. And then I want it touching wraps, not overlapping. Okay. Just touching wraps. Touching wraps. It's nice and tight. It's going to come back over top of it. Make sure that's nicely tied in. And then I'm going to take my red 
First, I'm just going to make sure that's tied in really nice. Okay. And I'm going to go in the same direction as I went with the tint. I'm going to create just a little bit of a butt. I'm going to give this a turn just for me to so I can get it started. And once I've got it started, I'll put it back up for you guys. Okay. And just create a nice ribbed body coming forward. And come back with the thread. I'll tie that off. Okay, now that that's tied off, I can either do some uh, uh, UV resin or I can uh, um, I just leave it and do it later. Uh, usually I'll do it now with some Sally Hansen's, but I'll do like 10 or 15 of these and then I'll come back and finish them. Um, I like keeping this thin, so that's why I don't use a lot of, of the resin on these. Um, so I'll just leave it for now. I'll do it later. So now... What I'll do is I'm going to take just a little piece of the uh, poly yarn. I know I did forget one ingredient. I'm going to be using some Semperfly orange goose biots as well. So I'm going to have this sticking out. Doesn't matter how far, just enough out front. Make sure it stays up on top. And then open turns. I'm going to come back to roughly where I stopped with my body. And then just cover that up. Okay, leave it alone. Take my goose biots. And I'm going to tie them in either side, right along the side, by the tip. So by right by the tip. Okay, I'm just going to give this a turn so I can see. Okay, so that one's in. I'll tie this one in. I have to turn it to, so I can see it. But then I'll show you guys, once I'm done, where it ends up landing. Right along the side. You see that? Okay. So now I'm just going to counterclockwise spin my thread. Get this nice and flat here. Come all the way forward. All the way back, you want to build up a little bit of a thorax, football shape thorax here. Flatten it again. Way forward, way backwards, way forwards. And that should be good. Then I'll take my two goose biots and I'm going to bring them right along the side. So just going to catch that in. Just make sure, turn, yes, that looks good, yes, that looks good. Get that nicely tied down. Now, I'm going to hold tight on my thread while I kind of helicopter off that by it. But you have to hold tight. If you don't hold tight on your thread, you'll pull them out. So hold tight on your thread and just helicopter those off. And see how they nicely they break free? So now I'm going to take my whip finishing tool. And I'm going to whip finish right there behind that eye. Get that nice and tight, nice and seated. Cut off my thread. Now I'm going to take the back end and make it about a quarter of an inch, and the front end and make it about a quarter of an inch. And that is my finished little fly. Now I will coat this and just show you. It does change the color ever so slightly. It does darken it ever so slightly when you coat this. Um, but I just sweep all my poly yarn forward there just so I can get up to underneath it there. And now you can see why I like doing it in batches. I like doing it all, um, all the bodies at the same time. 
Okay, so now I'll just hold that back. This is Sally Hansen's, by the way, that I'm using. And now I'm just going to make sure I get those that thorax section well coated. Especially those biots. You really want to get those coated because uh, that's going to be the weak spot for the fish's teeth, right? So it's kind of a hybrid type fly. It's kind of got the the, sh the look of a uh, shipman's buzzer because of the dual tags, um, but it is different. Um, I do tie this in several different versions. Um, I also tie it uh, with uh, um, with a silver. I don't have a silver, but here's one with a, a slightly lighter colored body. So it's more of a gun metal, right? And then I, but I'll, I'll put a tuft out the back as well. Just don't have any available with me right now, but um, yeah, I tie I tie these in a anywhere from a size. I I don't like tying them in a, in anything smaller than a sixteen. It's just it makes the 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 white uh, gills just become overpowering in something that small. So sixteen, fourteen, twelve. And if I'm going to like a lake like Tunkwa, where I know there's big bombers and stuff, I'll even tie this into a 10. So this is a 12. Um, so it is a fairly large, I mean, you can see by the size of my fingernail, it's a fairly large uh, fly. Um, but uh, like I said, they work really well. Just leave, the, leave, let these things go down through the water column. Don't rush them. Um, let them fish them all the way down and keep an eye on your line. Keep it nice and t tight. Um, I fish these... Uh, naked i don't really like that word but um i fish it without an indicator um and just let them sink down slowly and keep a nice tight line to that uh to that fly and uh just watch it a lot of times you'll get a you'll get a take on the way down so all righty hope you guys enjoyed that one and uh thanks for watching another uh episode of on the bench with sport fishing on the fly tight lines <laughs>